John and Pete Najarian are going to both played linebacker in the NFL, but uh, both are tech wizards as well. Market Rebellion is the name of their firm, and we'll talk to them. And uh, these guys, John and Pete, <clears throat> they d- developed an algorithm called Heat Seeker, and they saw unusual activity on it. And they, uh, United, United and American Airlines days before 9-11, and they mm-hmm. gave it to the FBI. And uh, we'll get into Well, we know how it ended, but we'll get into what happened next. With John and Pete Najarian right after this. Kids, 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 focus on the kids' crate, train them. Get them, get those puppies trained. Get them in the fucking crate early and they'll listen to their master for the rest of their life. Can't crate train these dudes. They're too fucking old. Don't try. We are too old. Do not try. People have tried. But the kids, get them early. Get them into the fucking crate and train them up and they'll be obedient little citizens for the rest of their fucking lives. Don't think I don't know what's going on. John and Pete Najarian <laughs> are here. John, I've spoken to before. Pete, uh, well, they're brothers, obviously. Both played in the NFL, so we should talk about that. Uh, also have an educational firm. Market Rebellion provides online courses and stocks, options, crypto, which we talked about with John before, oh. as as well. Let's, and I've got an NFT for you, by the way. You do. We our guys made up an NFT just for you. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh my God, that's amazing. That's, it is our zombie collective made this up. Wow. And wait, we've got three because the there's angel. There's another one. The oh, angel. Wow. Wow. So far, the the crazy, the crazed robot, the angel. And there's another. Angel. We got a the devil angel. angel. I love it. A righteous gemstones. Thank line. you. We'll get this to you, Adam, because we're really giving you this NFT. <gasps> that what? is fabulous. Well, let's let. Okay, let's go to <laughs> let's go to NFT for a second, and uh, and I'll 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 have poor Chris look around on the internet, but. I, I like cars. I like looking at the vintage cars and the old race cars and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes I'll go on to the website, Gooding and Company, RM, some of the bigger ones, and they'll go like, here are the results from our last last month's auction. And they're doing a lot online now. But for the And so they will sell like – you know, uh, Mario Andretti's uh, steering wheel from 1969 season F1 car. Some, there's some memorabilia, some plaques and some cups. <laughs> For the first time, I got to the bottom when I was done with all the cars, and there were NFTs. You bet. Like a picture of a car. Mm-hmm. And it was like 7500 bucks <laughs> for this thing that yep. no one can truly explain, but Chris, it's <laughs> probably you can prove good that in it's the RM. only one. Right. Right. You can prove through the blockchain, you can prove that that is the only one of that. Just right. like the one I showed you as far as your um, uh, awesome. NFT. I don't, I don't mean That's any awesome. disrespect, Girl but NFT. there's only one of my mom and no one gives a shit. I think <laughs> that's how I would rebut that. Well, uh, well said. <laughs> but but you're a famous dude, mm-hmm. um, got a lot of fans, and so people want to own pieces of in- incidents like that, of somebody famous, you know, whether it's Odell Beckham, you know, making a touchdown catch in the Super Bowl, they might be willing to buy that, especially if it came with anything else, and in many cases it does. Well, where are we in t- – look, we I just heard the – Inflation, it always bums me out because they go, it, we are now at the highest inflation since February of 1982, <laughs> which is when I was fixing to leave high school, not go to college and wander around North Hollywood looking for a job. <laughs> the only difference, and I would argue to uh, the young depressed kids today I applied at the Taco Bell in North Hollywood. No takers. Mm. Like, what? So how now does they're it, begging for guys like you? But now, yeah, how does this? <laughs> how does this work? In that, I had when I graduated high school, super high inflation and no hiring. Mm. Now it's super high inflation and everyone is hiring. Mm-hmm. How That's true? How, why? How can those two worlds sort of live together? <laughs> well, they, they sort of live together because of the high inflation. Um, a lot of the that inflation is, as you know, supply and demand. In the case of supply, there's not enough. There's not enough workers willing to go back to work. So pushes demand stays high, and that means they can demand more cash. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's the ingredients that go into making that 
taco at Taco Bell or that burrito or Bell, whether it's Bell the, beef or at the time <laughs> old school or, or whether it's, you know, the amount of money they got to pay you per hour to work there. All of that is pushing inflation up. And it's like I say, it really is a supply problem right now. Is Not a all, demand problem. There's it, a lot of demand. The demand's there. Is yeah. part of the supply problem, I, I'm, this is from the mouth of babes, because I really don't <laughs> I know any of this stuff, but like <laughs> my parents, and we've talked about this, over the course of their lifetime, owned one and a half sofas. Like for their entire life. There's one where they, they moved, someone died, they got their sofa. I've probably owned 23 sofas over the course of my life. I mean, we're just buying more shit. Like, uh, we didn't Correct. shop like this. There was like, there was. There was Christmas and there was your birthday. You yeah. didn't get shit between those Randomly two. Randomly just showed you up. Go on to Amazon and just go shopping <laughs> on a Tuesday. Well, and I told you when I was three years old, I drew all over our white Naga hide couches. They threw an Afghan over it and they're still in my house. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Pete's building a house down in Florida mm -hmm. um, because he's the rich one. Yeah. And so he's building a house I'm down the rich there. One. <laughs> you can't get most of what he needs for his house. It is out there three months, six months wow. into the future. I know you know this because you're a construction guy in your prior life. Yeah, well, I as mean, well as mechanic. I still do shit. I mean, plywood <laughs> went from 41 bucks oh. a sheet to 102 bucks a sheet. Like, it, it got really expensive. I don't know. All the building supplies, all the everything. And yeah, I'm also, lumber, all that stuff. Yeah. I, I, what about labor? I mean, you Brutal. need some skilled labor. There's nobody oh. out there. I, we're building a house, and it's, it's unbelievable. Nobody wants to work. They, they, I don't know how they survive, but they decide they don't want to work. And the, you talk about supply chain. I was just talking to one of the guys who was working inside the house, and he was telling me, luckily, we don't need new trusses in the house, you know, for your ceilings, the roof, and the whole I deal. know what a truss is. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to go over you, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, but he said it's one year out. Wow. It's one year wow. out for those. So if you're building your house right now, uh, my wife, so what, such a wonderful woman, she went out, she bought the refrigerators and all the appliances nine months ago, knowing that it's going to take an, a, a, over a year to build the house. Wow. You know, I think wow. I've found an answer, which is <laughs> I know nothing about tech. So whenever these guys screw the pooch, they go, Internet's out. I'll go, how come we didn't have, I told you that, to go that, look. That. We got internet. And I go, Bleh. and I just walk away because I can't, I can't challenge them. The the but <laughs> I am a blue collar guy and I just Literally. found our internet. It's supply chain. So you come in, I screwed the pooch, I didn't order the bar joists or the truss or uh, the paralams or whatever, and I fucked up. And then you go, hey man, what's going on? Where are these paralams? I go, supply chain, uh -oh. we got an issue. And you go, fuck, and you walk away and go work on the internet. It's a two-way street say now. fuck a lot. So, yeah, go ahead, friend. Speaking of, speaking of the labor thing, I want you guys are financial guys, I want to drill down on this because I don't know anything about this. I only know what I see or read or whatever. Is the narrative that people aren't working because it's more profitable to collect unemployment or whatever, is that accurate? Or because what I see, so the, I see my, my wife works for, she's an executive at a big, big company, and a lot of her like mid level people are leaving for better jobs. You know what I mean? Like, so it feels like the jobs are like, I don't. I don't feel like In-N-Out has the same problem Taco Bell does. You know what I mean? Because they pay a little more and it's a better mm -hmm. job. I wonder if they're getting those people. People are scaling up in their careers. But you tell me, what, what does the data say or what are, you, what are you saying? Well, an awful lot of people, of course, uh, were afraid to go back because, unfortunately, they beat them over the head for 18 months about how they were all going to die. And, you know. Oh, sure. For jobs, you have to uh, go Unless to, you're right. Garcetti and you can say, yeah. I held my breath. Right. I held my breath when I was next to Magic Johnson. Um, <laughs> but Which is, uh, I argue that's kind of a hate crime. It's kind of, yeah. I, I thought it was kind of racist. To a man of color I held my breath. breath when I was next yes. to him. Why'd you hold your breath? Well, he <laughs> didn't smell so good. It's unbelievable. But, yeah, I, I think, Brian, the issue is that uh, in many cases they are taking better jobs. Um, in other cases, they've just found enough gig work that they can to work make, around and say, you know what? I used to spend 200 bucks, 400 bucks a month on either a train pass or gasoline to get to and from. I'd lose an hour each way and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they go, I have a better life. I don't make quite as much money, but I'm making things work. 
And between that okay. and unemployment and blah, 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 I mean, I think all that plays into okay. it. It's cobbling together. Yeah. I also think that we have done something that's a little dangerous, which is we've undervalued the importance of work, like actual work, mm. like what that brings psychologically to anyone who's out there, a little sense of pride or, you know, a job well done or all, all the cliches from the past. And we've sort of done this thing where it's like if you, you could get 600 bucks a week doing this, or you could get 600 bucks a week staying home. So I'll stay home and break even, but you're not breaking even because you're atrophying. Right. Your mind is <laughs> yeah. getting weak. You're getting weird. You're getting angry. You're getting mm -hmm. fat. Like so you, crazy. you need, yeah. We need that. And that's what worries me a little about, um, you know, uh, it's guaranteed income or what? what is Andrew universal Yang? Basic universal income, income and stuff UBI. like that. Like yeah. eh, supplementing something is fine. But when it takes the place of we're getting into some real dangerous waters here. Uh, Lamborghini Truly. and RM auctioned uh, NFTs this month. So the two of? big car, um, <laughs> the two big car auctions are rm lambert uh auctioned off a lamborghini i guess uh yeah nft so yeah so what they give you is they give you this uh they give you a key which is like a it has a Q qr code on it and then uh, when you scan it you're you see the artwork on your phone or, or uh, you can see it on your tv and so they they uh in the first four days of february they auctioned off five of them and they went up to as high as two hundred four thousand dollars really yeah adam don't sleep on this but this look, if you're trying to get laid, spend the 200 on a real Gallardo. Because <laughs> you pull up on that first date and you fucking camera, you and go, you show them the picture roll. Yes. Check my phone out. <laughs> Scan this. Want to start blowing now or do you want after one. dinner? <laughs> oh, man, they make like a thousand of those Gallardos, but there's only five of these, baby. Now get in the cloth interior oh. Toyota Camry and let's well, go off to Spago. On the other hand, if you can buy that, NFT of the Lamborghini hmm. and then sell it to somebody else who, you know, because of its rarity or any of these other terms that they use for this stuff, um, you're able to make 5,000, 10,000. I mean, I was in Switzerland three weeks ago. They were doing a big NFT auction and I was speaking at a crypto conference. So a bunch of us went down to the uh, auction and it granted it was for charity, but they had NFTs that people were bidding at that time 10 ETH, meaning Ethereum. Oh. They're buying with for 10 ETH, which was at that time about $35,000. Something that you're just like going, well, it's okay, I guess. But why would you buy this for that? Well, because somebody else will come along and buy it for more. Yeah. Well, is that, is if that it's what's rare happening enough. With, is, that, is that sort of the crypto idea? And then also... If you had a teenage son and you told him you just bought a new Lambo and he ran for the garage, you know, like you were chasing behind him, Come holding back. your phone up. Sorry, go ahead, gonna run you. Well, okay, two thoughts. One, how is the resale market on NFTs? Is there one? Do you have enough data yet? Number two. Massive. Th is it, is it, is it, is it is profitable? Very. Okay, the second question, is this quite... It seems, feels obvious to me this is a money laundering scheme. <laughs> well, not uh, on the blockchain, yeah, right? Yeah, yes. you, um, well, the you know every one that's been purchased and the wallet that it you know went to, mm -hmm. um, whether it's a me meta wallet or whatever, you know where it went. Um, they could track it, as you saw this week. Um, two people stole three point five oh, they recovered it. billion yeah, dollars, yeah. and U.S. recovered it. So right now, by the way, U.S. government is the largest holder of Bitcoin. Um, oh, because they have the because uh, they have yeah. those coins until they redistribute <laughs> them out. But um, I, I, think I like the the Apple Dumpling Gang. It's like we're breaking into <laughs> Fort Knox. <laughs> they have the, the three hundred and fifty large <laughs> in there. <laughs> Sorry, now well, start tunneling, boys. <laughs> Sorry. When you're seeing these NFTs, I mean, for instance, the first three days of the year, there were seven hundred and fifty million dollars worth of NFTs purchased globally. Um, and obviously some of those will become worth five times, 10 times, a hundred times what they're originally purchased for. And others will be worth nothing. You'll have this terrible squiggly line that somebody drew because somebody really did buy a squiggly line, digital squig squiggly line, mm -hmm. and they paid that for it. Um, that puts it on track to be the global traditional, uh, market for art is about 65 billion. Okay. 
Um, if we were able to maintain the pace that we're at right now, we'd be at $90 billion this year for NFT this art. So in other words, it's okay. screaming past regular art. Because um, there's going to be an NFT for the Mona Lisa. You bet. Right? I mean, it, it can already, be an, already yeah. has. Now, what's this mean for a guy we brought, his name popped up early, a guy like Quentin Tarantino. He's got mm -hmm. all created all this visual product. Or any songwriting mm -hmm. rights. Yes. Can you... Is a guy like that sitting property. on a virtual gold mine? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he is. Um, he's sitting Absolutely. on a gold mine, and I wanted to hook you and him up for cars because he has a lot of the cars from all of his movies. Oh, he does? And I think uh, I think maybe with Mike August, I was saying, you should get Adam and Quentin together because he has all the famous cars from his movie, Pussy Wagon and all the other cars, you know, that he's got from all Kill Bill. Yeah, <laughs> all the classics. <laughs> Probably the one that hit Ving Rhames. That's um, right. Bert Bruce right. Willis like a Rams. Honda Civic. <laughs> yeah. But um, he has <laughs> all you. And you're, I said, if you guys got together, you could make millions in the car shows and things like that, whether it's New York Auto Ooh. Show, L.A. Auto Show. You pay this much extra to go in and see Adams and Quentin's cars and things like that. But yeah, you could put any of that stuff on an NFT. You're going to have songs on there. Yep. You're going to have uh, clips from movies and things like that. And you can prove that mm. this is the only one of that because it's all verified on the blockchain and so forth. And so instead of paying hundreds of millions of dollars uh, for a piece of art and then having to insure it for hundreds of thousands of dollars and so forth, you could just have this digital stuff and hope that it gets the same sort of appreciation. Mm. Will it? Time will tell. I mean, that's why we're making these zombie, uh, the zombie collective is all about us. We're doing these for um, ballers, for uh, presidents, um, for um, uh, stars of stage and screen and things like that. And it's all going to be zombie NFTs right. of those folks. So Adam where, joined where, there. Where are we at with crypto <laughs> and, uh, and the government? because I'm hearing a lot of talk that the government's kind of chasing this. So, you know, we had a gold standard, but we don't really have that anymore. I don't know, we're 30 <laughs> trillion bucks worth of deficit. Can it be taxed? Well, there's, oh, yeah. there's a taxing part, but there's also the part where the government isn't controlling it. Mm -hmm. And they crazy. want yeah. to control things, last I checked. <laughs> yep. So <laughs> correct. that's got to be coming, right? Yeah, um, and Regulators more or that. less, the people that own the wallet companies, you know, whether it's Ledger or whether it's uh, MetaMask or any of these companies that make wallets and so forth, and certainly all the brokers like Coinbase you're familiar with, even if you've never used it, you've probably heard of them, and they have to report back to the government the net number of dollars in, dollars out if you cashed out. So in other words, you traded out of a Bitcoin. That's why so many people never completely leave the digital. They go from Bitcoin into a stable coin, back into Ethereum, back into a stable coin. They trade back and forth, but they don't take any money out. Uh -huh. It would be like cashing out of your like 401k. Yeah. Yeah, they're oh, going to take yeah. their chunk. Walking yeah. around with casino chips. Right. <laughs> but the government would want that tax on that, it, it, but it is really hard for them to determine what the tax would be if you're not pulling money mm -hmm. out of that account. Yeah. And is, instead, you're just trading back and forth. Is there some parallels to sort of big tech, which is, you know, these guys started Twitter and Facebook and all all this stuff, Google and everything else. And the government just sort of watched them for a while or sort of let them go. And then lately, they're kind of like, hey, we'd like to kind of get involved, see what you're <laughs> talking about, maybe have some things we don't want you to talk about and stuff we will let you talk about. Like, they're not going to just sit idly and watch some trillion dollar thing go down and not start to kind of, or grow to the size that it is and yeah. will grow to and not start wetting their beak, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I would agree. Uh, regulation is coming, but uh, Brian mentioned decentralized. Decentralized means that no government anywhere, unless you shut down the internet, you can't stop it because they just go to Malta. Um, they bounce over to Singapore. They go over to, you know, 10 different locations around the world where the U.S. government can't touch them. Like and production tax breaks. So go wherever the tax break is greatest. Right. <laughs> You're not loyal to New Mexico. Yeah. Well, so unless Al Gore pulls the plug on that internet, <laughs> yeah. he was it's great. safe. Um, 
let's talk about uh, Market Rebellion because uh, I know you guys are trying to help people learn about stocks and options, crypto and all that. I'm all, well, I think you just did, but how does, uh, where would people can go to marketrebellion.com and what will they find there? <laughs> They're going to find everything they want to know about the markets itself. They're going to find out about the options world, the derivatives world as it's known. And it's, it's very confusing, but they, they, they have to be educated. That's one of the biggest things that John and I always want to make sure is that anybody who ever gets into the markets understands exactly what their risks are. And that was a big story over the last year or so, especially when you're talking about all these new traders, new investors into the marketplace. That changed everything. And, and, and suddenly we had all these folks. But the problem is they didn't really know exactly how much risk they, went, they had at times. And that was part of the whole Robin Hood thing. It was mm -hmm. part of all of those different things. And, and so that's something that we just want to make sure that people, when they're going to get involved in the markets, that they know what they're doing. They're educated from us or anybody else, but they get educated at Market Rebellion. We've got great people there. And then John and I, of course, have always focused on the options markets. We've been on in these. You've been there since 1981. I've been there since 1992. And, and we just uh, we, we love the leverage. And if you go back to the financial crisis, we lost all leverage, right? I mm -hmm. mean, that, that's what really changed in the markets, except the options world still existed. And to give you a small example, you go back to 2007, give or take, you know, during the financial crisis all the different issues going on. And I think, what were we averaging per day? Maybe 12, uh, 12, 12 million, yep. maybe? About 12 million a day. Now we average 45 million this contracts This is option contracts <laughs> wow. traded so, per day. Yeah. So and, it's tripled yeah. since the financial crisis. And each one of those contracts represents 100 shares of stock. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of just how big it has become and the growth trajectory we've had. Mm. Matter of fact, even through the financial crisis, it's amazing because – our biggest year ever, and every year has been bigger than the, than the previous. Our biggest year ever, I think, uh, 2019, I think we were about 20 million, and now we're 45 million. Gives you a small idea of per just day. the huge growth. Per day. Jeez. Per day. Every single day. These guys look like the yeah. tag team champions of the world, and here they're <laughs> dropping all this <laughs> comprehensive knowledge. <laughs> you jocks in your stocks. Uh, so last time you were on, I got very interested, very curious, started dabbling, don't know what I'm doing. Um, and I'm fine with that. I'm just trying to learn. Um, because you really did make me very curious about all this. So I'm wondering for people who, you know, are interested in, you know, maybe they've done like normal stock, normal normal day trading, you know, that kind of thing. Is there such thing as a safe cryptocurrency to kind of cut just, just to get started or that's not a thing like it would be in the stock market? Um, if you're looking for price appreciation and you don't have to, because you could go from regular fiat money, the stuff in your wallet to uh, digital and go right into something like a stable coin. Um, it's not going to go up and down in price like USDC. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a stable coin. It's always a dollar. But once you're out of fiat and into that digital currency, you can flip from there into Bitcoin, into Ethereum, into Tron, into Litecoin, into, you know, any of the 16,000 mm, really? digital assets that are out there. <laughs> um I'm reading here, by the way, that Miramax sued Quentin yes. Tarantino in November over Pulp Fiction. We NF talked about that. NFTs. Yeah, because they said, that's not yours. That's ours. We even know they're still in business. Before, <laughs> uh, before we say goodbye, uh, let's talk quickly about the, the whole 9-11 heat seeker algorithm thing. Mm -hmm. I find that very interesting. I think sure. our audience would. Well, um, and Pete and I, we were both on the floor at the time, and... Uh, 9-11 uh, occurs and, uh, you know, you're seeing the planes fly into the buildings you're and so forth. on the stock forth. exchange. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're down mm -hmm. there on the floor watching it on TV. And then, you know, and we're both uh, private pilots. So when we saw the damage that was done to the buildings, we said, well, that wasn't a little plane because they said at the time, oh, it was some small plane flew yeah, into the World plane. Trade Center. Yeah, and there were, were like, stories no. of yeah. private planes hitting the Empire State Building and a yeah. fog bank and stuff like that. Yeah. And you're in the financial district, so you're not too far away. You're downtown. Right. Um, so we see all this playing out, and then we go back and we say, didn't we have a lot of volume on the put side in United Airlines and American Airlines? A put is basically a bet on the downside of the market, in okay. this case, the downside of United or American Airlines. And those are the only puts they bought. How is that different than shorting? I don't know. Uh, same th it's oh, okay. more, same it's, thing, but you got leverage. Yep. Okay. You've yeah, got okay. leverage and less risk because you, if you own a put, you can only lose what you paid for it. 
if you short the stock Whatever and it does a GameStop yeah, okay. and it starts running to $400. You're from, out. That, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. losing all that money. So anyway, um, the unusual activity then showed us that there were a lot of big bets placed just two and three days before the planes flew into the buildings um, in only those two stocks, United and American mm. Airlines, betting that those stocks would go down a lot. And, of course, they were right. Um, we gave our data over to the FBI. and uh, Foreign money, I'm assuming? Yep. Hmm. It, it came out of uh, – ultimately, it came out of Germany. Really? But that's where the terror cells were based prior to sure, sure. coming here and learning how to fly a plane but not how to land it. Right. <laughs> and, Adam, I got one other thing real hmm. quick. Just like that, but the financial crisis, Bear Stearns was trading at close to $70 a share. This is pre-financial crisis. That was the first biggie that was going to go down. But it's trading about $70 a share, give or take. The CEO is on TV. He's on CNBC saying everything is fine. Everybody says everything's fine. And I look over at John and I go, that's really kind of weird because we just had some huge put buying. Again, mm -hmm. same mm -hmm. sort of a story. They were buying puts at the 30 strike, which means basically they're, they're betting this thing's going to zero. Right. And – Sure enough, it pretty much did. Who was and they? Yeah, who, the the, the giant traders that are coming in there who are really smart, and that's why John and I call and it anonymous. Follow, follow right. the smart money, but um, huge hedge fund types. Are we talking Christian Bale from The Big Short? You know, the, I mean, like well, who's the, hedge fund manager? Right, that, the, the guys that were seeing things that everyone said, "Oh, you're crazy." Right, it's like that. Yes, it's a, it's it's a version of that in the derivatives market wow. where you get all the leverage in the world to be able to do it, and then sure enough, we had all the rest of the financials started getting the same type of thing. And it's just amazing how it sort of gives you a little bit of a crystal ball into the future sometimes. They did that in General Motors mm -hmm. before they went bankrupt. Stocks like 30 bucks, 35 bucks. They're betting that it's going to go below five in the next two months. And it's like, well, that's a fool's bet. Why would you bet that? But then, of course, they, they knew more something. about the balance sheet and how much borrowing they'd have to do and they didn't have enough cash. Right. And the stock went bankrupt. I just want to, for a second make sure that we're not slandering terrorists by comparing <laughs> them to hedge fund <laughs> managers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We a have point. a pretty broad no, audience. We don't want to have to retract that later. I don't yeah. want to have to walk no, that back. <laughs> All right, John and Pete Nigerian Market Rebellion is the name of the firm.